Hi, welcome to Burning Bush World Ministries. I'm Latina Cates. Today we're going to talk about the tongue. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would give me the words, the wisdom, the speak, all that you would want me to say to your people, Lord God, and let this word fall on good ground, Lord God. I pray that you would massage minds and hearts so that they would hear your word and apply it to their lives, and that this word would be not only for today, but for a lifetime, in Jesus' name. I declare and I decree that every demonic spirit under the sound of my voice, you will submit to God's authority and to mine. As an ambassador of God, I command that you submit to the authority of God in mine, in Jesus' name. Again, people, we're going to talk about the tongue today. Um, I was walking, uh, I want to say I was at work when I heard the Lord tell me to speak on the tongue. And so um, this message is from the Lord. Um, I'm going to start with Proverbs 18 and 21. And it reads as follows. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life is in your tongue. Now your tongue can be used to exalt people, to build people up, to encourage them, to refresh them, to strengthen people, to comfort them. Your words can be like honey. They can be sweet and soothing. Or you can use your tongue to destroy. And that's the death. The, uh, it, it can be like, like sour lemons or uh, words that tear people down, discourage people, um, disgrace people, disgust people, and that's basically cursing people. So your words can either be good or bad. They can be life or they're death. It just up, it's up to you. When I was a young child, there was a riddle going around, and it went something like this. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. And people, that's a tale. That's, that's not true, because names do hurt. Some names do hurt. It depends on who they're coming from. But if it's from a loved one, and it's something that you don't agree with, it hurts. It tears things down. It's destructive. Words can start a war. Husbands and wives, you know this. A lot of people, you know this. You can get into an argument with your spouse and you say the wrong words and the war is on. Sometimes it's not what you said, it's how you said it. The Bible tells us that a soft tongue can deter wrath. Words, even between sisters and brothers, they can get so heated or they can be so loving. Your words are important. On your job, if you say the wrong things, you can find yourself fired and without a job. I've learned, and this is what I say now, that if you can't say anything positive, don't say anything at all. In the book of James, he tells us to let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. And in Matthews, Jesus tells us that we will give account of every idle word. Your words are either life or death. Turn with me over to Proverbs 6, 16. I want to show you something. These six things do if the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet 
that be swift to running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Two of those things reference the tongue. They're an abomination to God, a lying tongue and a tongue speaking false witness. You have power in your tongue. It's either life or death. You have to be careful how you use it. People, what you say matters. Your words carry power. Talkers have to be very, very careful. And gossipers have to be even more careful. Because gossiping, let me talk about gossiping first. Gossiping can be, it can be, some of it can be true. Some of it is false. But you still have to be careful because the word of God says you will give an account to every idle word. When you listen to gossipers, sometimes they'll help you form an opinion. You may judge people, not even on their own merit. You may get into unforgiveness or resentment. And you really shouldn't be involved. When I hear gossip, I, you know what, I try to get away from it. Or actually, I get away from it. And I'll say, well, you know what, they just need prayer. And I'm... Whoever they're talking about needs prayer, and the person doing the gossiping needs prayer. Get away from it. It's not good. Talkers. Anyone who talks a lot, they're in danger with their tongue. Because every idle word, we have to give an account for it. Jesus told us to let our conversation be yay, yay, and nay, nay. And any more than that becomes evil. The Bible does give us privilege to talk. In Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 7, the Bible tells us to speak of the word of God when we walk us by the way, when we rise up, when we lay down and to teach that word to our children and our children's children. So God gives us permission to talk, but he tells us to talk about his commandments and his word. Let me find it. So I say it exactly right. Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 7. Now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whether you go to possess it, that thou mightst fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and, with, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of your fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Verse 7, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So God does give us permission to talk, and there's something we can talk about all the time. His word, his commandment. Again, beyond that, the conversation should be yay, yay, and nay, nay. But I want to tell you something about the tongue. In James, he tells us 
James chapter 3, because this tongue is, is it's really a powerful weapon. He says, James chapter 3, verse 3, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 8 through 10. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which is made after the smaltitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. It takes God to control your tongue. It takes God for you to have control over your mouth. When you have control over your mouth, it, it indicates a level of spiritual maturity. I, I tell people when I counsel them, one way, one way to pretty much know if you're saved, if you, if you got this salvation peace in, in order is to get into an argument with your spouse. When you get in, not, I'm not suggesting that you get into an argument with your spouse, but when you get into an argument with your spouse, if you can control your tongue, you're doing pretty good. Because your spouse is someone that is so close to you, they know how to push all the buttons. Your children the same way. They can push your buttons, whereas someone you don't even know, you could be driving down the street, somebody can flip you off, you don't even care. There are a few people who do care, and those are our road rage people, but I'm not ref really referring to them. But I'm talking about people who are close to you know how to push your buttons. And if you can control your tongue among them, you're doing pretty good. The Bible tells us that we can get angry, but we're not supposed to sin. Anger, but sin not. So if you get angry, that's not an excuse to sin. I've run into different Christians, and, and I know they're Christians. They get mad, and <laughs> they, they lose control of their tongue. It doesn't go like that. You're not supposed to do that. You have to ask God to help you with your tongue, and then you try. One of my friends, Pastor Loretta Hazley, I, I love her, and she always, she, she references uh, uh, people getting angry, and, and, and she'll say, different ones will say to her that I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> and Pastor Loretta would say, don't give them a piece of your mind. You need all of your mind. Don't give anybody a piece of your mind. <laughs> and I agree with that. So when you get angry, that's, that's not a reason to sin. Do not sin with your tongue. You have power in your mouth. Life or death. More power than you know. Let me give you an example. When God made us, he made us in his image. From the very beginning, he made us and he gave us dominion over fish, fowl, animals, the earth. He told us to control the earth, to subdue it, to handle it, to take care of it. He gave us the ability to be independent thinkers. He didn't do that for any other animal. Uh, uh, there are a few animals that we can teach. We teach how to do different things, but for the most part, uh, when it comes down to creativity, no one compares to man. No one can, no other species can uh, make cars. No other species make clothes. No other species um, uh, build, build brick houses. Um, no other pe species can uh, speak various languages. And that's what God did with, he, uh, with us. He made us in his image, and he made us his masterpiece. We're marvelously made and wonderfully made. We have his DNA. He gave us his creativity. He gave us his spirit. 
And in doing that, he gave us the ability to even create with our mouths. Just like in Genesis, when God said, let there be light, everything God said, he saw. And I tell you, Christians, you have power in your mouth. When you speak, things manifest. Jesus said that we are little gods, gods with a little g. It's also uh, stated in Psalms 82 and 6. It says, I have said, ye are gods. God made us little gods like him. So that same ability to speak things into existence is in us. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. In the Old Testament, we see manifestation of power in the tongue in a lot of ways. First, with Isaac. Isaac prophesied to his sons Esau and Jacob. He prophesied their futures. Jacob, who is later named Israel, he prophesied the futures of all of his 12 sons. And then we get to Moses. Now, you guys know about Moses. Moses led the Hebrew children out of Egypt, and he used a rod to perform most of the miracles. And there was a time when God told Moses to speak to the rock. And you guys probably know the story. He got upset, and he hit the rock. But the Lord told him to speak to the rock, to use his voice, and the, the rock would bring forth water. Later on, as we move down in the scriptures, we see Joshua, uh, general of the army, running around conquering land, chasing the enemy, and he was uh, up against the, uh, the uh, Amorites, and it was getting near the end of day. And he spoke to the sun and to the moon and told them to be still so that he could conquer his enemies. And God heard him. And he made the sun and the moon be still. You have power in your tongue. You have power and authority in your tongue. Jesus, he told us to speak to the mountain. Whatever the issue was, he told us to speak to it. He says, if you believe that you can do this, you can speak to the mountain and it will obey. He said that two times. He said it in Matthew 17, 20, and he said it in Matthew 21, 21. When Jesus says anything, it's real, it's true. And when he says it twice, you know it's very, very important. You have power in your tongue. You have power in your mouth. Everything that God said, he saw. Everything he said, he saw. We have that same power. God calleth those things that be not as though they were. And he gave us the same power. You're more powerful than what you think. You're more powerful than what you know. The devil doesn't want you to realize how powerful you are. And he does everything he can to prevent you from knowing who you are and how powerful you are. Hosea tells us, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And people are, just in general, because what you don't know can hurt you. It can hinder you. The devil tries to keep us distracted so that you don't find out who you really are. Because, see, when you realize how much power you have in your tongue, his power diminishes and yours and Father God's increases.
Satan doesn't mind keeping us busy on everything except for the word of God. That's his goal, is to keep us distracted, keep us doing anything but speaking the word of God. We could talk about John Doe, Jane Doe, and everybody else, but just don't talk about the word. And the word is the only thing we're supposed to be talking about all the time. You can speak negatively about yourself, and the devil don't mind. And those of you who have a prophetic mantle on your life, you'll say things about yourself, negative things about yourself, and things just keep getting worse and keep getting worse and keep getting worse. Why? Because your words are living vessels. And what you say, you will see. When you have a prophetic mantle on your life, things materialize a lot faster. Now, if you don't have a prophetic mantle on your life, just because you're God's creation and you're made in his image, you still will see what you say. So you still have to be careful with what you say. Some of us, we were ordained prophets, like Jeremiah, from the womb. God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and I ordained you to be a prophet. And some of us have those gifts at birth. Others, we get them after we become saved. You need to know who you are. You need to understand how powerful you are. You have power in your mouth. Power to speak life or power to speak death. Some of you have children, and all you said was negative things about those children. And then you wonder why they turn out the way they do. You've prophesied it. You have to stop saying what you see. You have to say what you want to see. Stop saying what you have and say what you want. Call those things that be not as though they were. Say good things about your kids. Say good things about your job. Say what you want to see. Say what God says about you. That he's made you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Say what God says about you. Speak positive things into your future. You'll change the atmosphere. You have power in your mouth. You have power in your mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whether their fruit is life or whether their fruit is death, it's still coming. It's coming. Learn to have what you say versus saying what you have. Learn to have what you say versus saying what you have. So if your situation is negative, don't keep voicing that. Don't keep speaking to that. Don't keep giving that, that thing life because your words give it life. No, you got to turn it around, saying what you want to have. Call those things that be not as though they were. People, those of you who have sickness in your body, if you have sickness in your body, you can't, I suggest that you don't say, I have this or I have that. You have to reframe your words. Change your confession. The doctor said, da, 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 da. The doctor said, don't claim it. Don't claim it. It'll manifest. You're helping it to manifest when you claim it. You have to watch what you say. God has given each and every one of us a measure of faith. And our words are containers that hold that faith. You speak positive things to your situations. Because God is in you. Christ is in you. You have God's DNA. Know ye not that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, the most high God? 
He dwells in you. You have power in your mouth. Life and death. Speak life. Speak life. Now, this is a two-part message. So what I like to do is end right here, but join me next week for part two. In the meantime, I'm going to ask that you pray with me. If you need more control over your mouth, if you want God to, to help you with your mouth, then raise your hands and repeat after me. Father God, sweet Lord, help me with my mouth. Please take control over my mouth. Help me to do your will. Make me your disciple. I love you, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.